I'm Pastor Luke Torian here at First Mount Zion Baptist Church. Thank you for joining us in our worship service today. It is my sincere prayer that your hearts will be blessed as we worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God bless you. How long will it take? Somebody's asking how long will prejudice blind the visions of men? I come to say to you this afternoon, however difficult the moment, yes, sir. however frustrating the hour, it will not be long no, because truth crushed earth will rise again. Yes, sir. How long, not long, yes, sir. because no lie can live forever. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How long? Not long. How long? Because you shall reap what you sow. Yes, sir. How long? How long? Not long. How long? Who forever on the scaffold, long yes, forever on the throne. Yes, sir. Yes, that scaffold sways the future. Yes, Behind the dim unknown standeth God within the shadow, keeping watch above his own. How long? How long? Not long. Because the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends toward justice. Yes, How long? Not, not, long. Long. not long. Because mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Yes, sir. He's trampling out the bitties oh, where the oh, grapes of wrath are stored. Yes, sir. Yeah. He's loosed the faithful lightning of his terrible swift sword. Yes, sir. His truth is marching on. Yes, sir. He has sounded forth the trumpet that shall never call retreat. Lisa, Lisa. He is sifting out the hearts of men before his judgment seat. Yes. Oh, be swift, my soul, to answer him. Be jubilant, my feet. Our God is marching on. Yeah. Glory, hallelujah. Yes. Glory, hallelujah. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the third Sunday in January. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to magnify the Lord. I came to lift His holy name. If you come to lift Him higher, stand on your feet, stand on your feet. I have come to praise the Lord and lift His holy name, for He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy.
Amen, amen. Hear now our call to worship. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his wonders among all peoples. Please remain standing now and join with our choir in our opening hymn. Tara Parker, uh, proudly serving K-1. This morning's responsive reading is titled, We Remember Reverend Dr. M Martin Luther King, Jr. 
In every era, God has chosen men and women to serve the needs of his people. Such a servant was Martin Luther King Jr., whose birth we celebrate. We are deeply thankful for the life of this 20th century prophet. May the deep love that Dr. King had for all people be released in us, that we too might work miracles in the lives of those who continue to hate. May his struggle for social transformation continue in this generation. May all people come to believe that perseverance we shall overcome. May the work of Dr. King continue to eradicate racial injustice and its ungodly consequences. May we continue to cultivate the nonviolent discipline of Dr. King abandoning unrestrained acts of force. May the spirit of Dr. King continue to flow through our daily living. May we have the courage of Dr. King as we continue to stand up for justice, reconciliation, and truth, despite of challenge and controversy. May the peace of the risen Christ cause the fury of war to vanish from the face of the earth. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers, doers, and readers of his holy word. Good morning. I'm Deacon Vanny Parker, proudly serving Zone K-1. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning with grateful hearts and remembrance of your grace, mercy, and forgiveness, and we say thank you. As we reflect on all you have done in our lives and the goodness you have shown us, all we can say is, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we ask continued strength as we strive to do your will by loving one another and striving to be more Christ-like and all we do. Lord, we praise you and thank you for those who came before us and paid the price for our freedoms, our rights, and opportunities to pursue our dreams. As such, we take this opportunity to honor the birthday of life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. for his humble and gentle spirit, for the significant impact he made on our lives, and his inspiration that influenced and changed the world. Lord, we appreciate how Dr. King led the civil rights movement as a spiritual leader, speaking the truth of the word and vision for a better tomorrow. Lord, we take this moment to reflect on the progress that we have made, the lessons that we learned, and the opportunities that still exist for justice and equality for all. Lord, we pray for Pastor Torian and his family, that he continues to lead your flock in the way that you would have him to do so, and keep him uplifted with a hedge of protection all around him. We also pray for our assistant pastor, Reverend James, and her family. We pray with you to continue to strength and empower her as she continues to support Pastor Torian and teach your word. As we prepare to close the prayer, Lord, we ask that you prepare our hearts and minds to receive your word and ask that you keep us better understanding of your will and purpose over our lives. And when it's all said and done, Lord, we ask these blessings and more in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.
Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall uh, inherit the earth. Blessed are, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed, blessed are those, blessed are they, who which are persecuted, persecuted for righteousness, righteousness sake, for, 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 for the prayers of the kingdom of heaven.
and it is time to welcome our visitors. If you are visiting with us for the first time, would you please stand? On, be on behalf of our pastor, Dr. Luke E. Torian, and the First Mount Zion family, I welcome you. We're happy you were able to join us this morning for worship and pray that you'll be blessed, knowing that God is always watching over you. Our mission is to connect people who have a desire to become fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ, and our theme is from generation to generation, growing deeper, growing stronger, reaching higher, from Deuteronomy 32.7. We'd like to correspond with all of our visitors and ask that you call the church at 703-670-0184 or you can send an email to fmzbc at firstmountzionbc.org. First Please leave your name, your phone number, and your mailing address, and someone will be in contact with you within the week. And if you are seeking a church home, a place where you can worship, study God's word, practice stewardship, and serve, then this is the place for you, and we would be honored to welcome to this body of believers. Thank you so much for coming, and please come again soon. As you view today's announcements, please note that you can find additional information on these announcements on the announcement link on the website at www.fmzbc.com and govern yourselves accordingly. And on tomorrow, as we celebrate the birthday of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., let us remember his dream. Have a very blessed day. Good morning. How are we doing today? Now, we all are excited, and I want to say to the parents, thank you for allowing us again to be blessed by our jewels and by the voices of Zion. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful job. Thank you so very much. Uh, we appreciate seeing all of our young people in worship and sharing and, and having our young folks in the choir. It's, it's a beautiful thing. Thank you and thank the Lord for ushering us back in, the, in this direction that we're in. It's, it's, it's wonderful. Uh, please know that the church office will be closed on tomorrow uh, in observance and recognition of Martin Luther King Jr. birthday and holiday. So we'll be the office will be closed on tomorrow. Um, on the fifth Sunday in worship, um, we will celebrate the generations of FMZ. So that's all I can tell you right now. More details to follow on next Sunday. So you're going to be asked to... Uh, well, I'll just wait the next Sunday when I have more details. But that's what the note that I've been given. It says uh, music and other spotlights will happen. More details next week. All right. Okay, fair enough. Uh, just a couple of maintenance things I need to share with you. So anticipate that we're going to be incurring uh, some expense. All right. Um, these uh, big cameras that you see here, they are about seven or eight years old. You know what that means, right? We are behind with the technology. These screens that you see here, 
They've been up ever since we've been in the building, I believe. So all of this stuff, all of this is going to be replaced, okay? So that we can keep up with the trending technology. Uh, we are a few years behind. And we spent all day yesterday trying to get this bad boy to work, and it decided it's just not going to cooperate. So since it decided it's not going to cooperate, it's going to have to come down. <laughs> all right, so just want to make, just want to make you aware of that, okay? All right, thanks. <laughs> okay. We will continue our worship through the Ministry of Giving. For the benefit of our guests and those in the sanctuary, we receive two offerings. The first offering is for benevolence, and the second offering is our tithes and offering to the church. But you may all, always give at any time using our online giving link found on our website. Or you may mail your offering to the church address, 16622 Dumfries Road, Dumfries, Virginia, 22025, or Call the church for assistance at 703-670-0184, or you may be, uh, contact your zone leaders for assistance. Usher, please come forward. Good morning. I'm Trustee Pam Sessoms. Please pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you as humbly as we know how through your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, you and you alone are the abundant giver of grace, mercy, and resources. And for that, we say thank you. And we give back to you through our tithes, our gifts, and our offerings. Please teach us individually and collectively how to trust and be faithful stewards of these resources. And teach us how to bless others and teach us how to use them to bless our brothers, our sisters in Christ, the community and non-believers so that we may find, grow, and thrive in our relationship with you. This is our prayer in Jesus' name, amen.
Amen. As the forgiven and blessed people of God, let us offer to God ourselves and our gifts. Please stand now for the doxology. Friday, January 13th, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated celebrated the 110th anniversary of their founders. Day. Ladies in red, would you guys, would you ladies please stand? Thank you. And if my notes serves me correctly, on today, January 15th, the ladies of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated are celebrating their Founders Day as well, being founded in 1908. Ladies, will you please stand? Thank you all very much for the service that you render to the community the nation, and the world at large. God bless you both. Oh. 
Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18, the word of the Lord reads thusly, do not remember the former things, 
nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, so you not know it. So, what we have attempted to do over these first couple of Sundays is to kind of lay a foundation for us to build upon in our spiritual growth and development and to really focus in on trusting God greater and opening up ourselves in a way that we might experience him uh, in a greater way. Um, the first Sunday we spent time talking about our theme from generation to generation, growing deeper, growing stronger, and reaching higher. Um, and recognizing that no matter what, no matter what our age may be, uh, there's still the potential there for growth. Uh, there's still the potential there for self-discovery and allowing God to reveal more of himself to us. And then last week we talked about uh, letting God do what God wants to do in our lives that pleases him, and if we allow God to do, uh, like if we make ourselves vulnerable and, and allow God to do in us what God wants to do that pleases him, uh, it's going to bless us. We will be blessed uh, tremendously if we, if we allow that to happen. And so now we come to the sermon today, and Isaiah in chapter 43 uh, is reminding Israel how much God loves them and how much he wants to be their God and how much uh, he wants to protect them and to bless them as they are being delivered from, from Babylon. And then he gets to this verse of scripture. If you go back and read the first 17 verses, it, it, it really affirms what God is, how God is affirming Israel and letting them know that uh, he is their God. And then he gets to verse number 18. And he says to them, do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. And then that first part of verse 19, behold, I will do a new thing. And he is saying to them, no matter what you have experienced, no matter what you have gone through, put it in the past. Let the past be the past. Put it in the past. Uh, don't even try to remember. Don't try to recall. Don't try to live off those things that have happened to you in the past. And he said, for behold, he says, do not remember the former things, nor consider uh, the things of old. Put it behind you. For behold, I will do a new thing. I want to do a new thing in your life. I, there are things that I want to reveal to you, the things that I want you to experience. But in order for that to take place, you can't continue. You cannot continue to live in the past. You got to put that stuff behind you. And so let's transition for us today. Are you committed? Will you, will you be committed to open yourself up more, make yourself vulnerable so that you can grow deeper in your faith relationship with Christ because there are things that God really wants to do in us to, 
to grow us and to mature us. So are you willing to go before the Lord and say, here I am. I want to grow deeper in you. I want to go stronger in you. I want to be able to withstand whatever those challenges might be. I want to be able to withstand those challenges that will come my way. I want to be able to withstand some of the bad news, perhaps, that may come my way. And then I am reaching higher for those things. I want to reach higher for those things that you have for me. And in order for that to occur, God, I'm going to get out of the way. I'm going to make myself more vulnerable to you so that you can do in my life what is pleasing to you. And then, God, this is about today. I'm going to forget those things in the past. I'm not going to allow those things to cloud my mind. I'm not going to allow those things to cloud my heart. But I'm going to put those things in the past. You know, whatever those things might be that sometimes we hold on to things. And if you're holding on to things for the wrong reasons, if you're holding on to things for the wrong reasons, it's probably time to let those things go if you want to grow. You need to let those things go if you want to grow. And I've made a couple of notes. Forget those former things. Uh, do not be held down by past experiences that have not been good for your life. Some of us perhaps still, still deal with some level or degree of guilt. If you are dealing with and living with some degree of guilt, then it is time to let that go and allow God to do something different in your life. Some of us, perhaps, maybe, are living with some kind of regret. Maybe you regret that you didn't do something uh, that God told you you needed to do. I, uh, I was at an event Friday evening, and I, I met a gentleman... Um, I met a gentleman there. He was on his way out from the event. But I had met him earlier, and he reminded me that, that I had met him previously through Mark Ball. I'm like, okay. I'm trying to remember. But it, was, it was years ago. But, so on his way out, he gave me his card, and he was talking to me. He, he, had, he had been called into ministry. And... Uh, he started out, and these, these are his words. Then he said, he, uh, he uh, walked away from the ministry for a number of years. And then, after some experiences, he really felt God telling him he needs to get back in line and come back to the ministry. And he did, and he was made an elder in his church where he is now. He gave me his card. So he's elder. He's an elder in his church. So I share that story to say to you that perhaps there are some regrets in his life that no matter what he, whatever it was he was going through, he, he walked away from ministry. And, but then God did not walk away from him. And that's what we need to understand. Some of us are dealing with some uh, regrets in our life. And if you're dealing with regrets, put it behind you. Uh, then be willing. Also be willing to forgive. And then be willing to move forward. Some of us perhaps have made some bad decisions in the past. And because we've made some bad decisions, we're still allowing those bad decisions to haunt us. Put that stuff behind you. you, can't, you and, and then give yourself more over to God and, and let God do what God wants to do in your life. As the scripture says, uh, God has said, put those former things behind you. 
because he's ready to do something new and he's ready to do something different and he's ready to do something exciting in your life. And, there, and there's, there's biblical uh, precedence for this. So the religious leaders over in John chapter 8 brought a lady to him who they said had been caught in adultery. And they wanted to have her stoned. Okay? Now, mind you, they did, if she was caught in adultery, she couldn't do it by herself, right? So they, they brought the lady. They ain't bring the fella. Isn't that amazing? So they brought the lady, and they said, well, you know, she really ought to be stoned. So I, I, the scripture said Jesus uh, said, those who are without sin, y'all cast the first stone. Then the Bible said Jesus knelt down and started writing on the ground. Doesn't tell us, doesn't tell us what he wrote. He just started writing on the ground. And the Bible says, beginning with the oldest, beginning with the old man, whoever he was. They all start walking away. All right, they start walking away. Jesus said, if y'all without sin, y'all go ahead. You know, go ahead and stone her. And then they looked at themselves. They took, they took inventory of their own life. Then they realized, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm probably worse shape than she is. And they just started walking away. And he kept writing on the ground. And then all of a sudden, he looked up and he says to her, where are your accusers? And they were all gone. And Jesus said, go and sin no more. In other words, put this behind you. Turn over a new chapter in your life. And so maybe, maybe for some of us, what we need to do, and, and maybe not for some of us, but for all of us, we need to leave things behind us and turn and, and begin a new chapter. Allow this year to be a year of great possibilities where you are believing God for great things in your life. You're believing God for greater spiritual maturity in your life where you have more patience. You know, I, I, said, I said to the men on yesterday uh, at their meeting, sometimes, you know, what we need to do uh, is ask God to give us more patience so that when folks say certain things to us, uh, I'm saying when folks say certain things to us, we don't always have to respond. I am so tempted to do this. Y'all know what I'm going to do. But I'm not going to do it because I have to go home. <laughs> you know, sometimes just, you know, everything does not require a response. Everything does not require a reaction. You know, and so if we're going to allow, if we're going to open up ourselves and, and, and if we're going to grow and become that person that we believe that we want to be, then we ought to allow God to do what God wants to do. And, and if we're looking forward to new things, then look forward and, and let us develop a new attitude. A new attitude about life where my attitude is that I want to experience all of the possibilities that God has for me. Uh, then allow yourself, put old things behind you, and then have a new perspective. Have a new perspective about life and about the abundance of life, about the joy of life, about the fulfillment of life. God has all of that available for us if that is what we want. And if that is what we're willing to trust him in, in a new direction, a new direction in one's life. I'm not talking about getting up and changing careers, quitting your job. And, and no, I'm not talking about that because don't do not do not quit your job <laughs> unless you have another job to go to. Somebody's going to have to pay the mortgage. You know, folk get mad and they get angry at their supervisor, and then they want to walk away from their job. And like they go, they're making a point. You are not making a point to anybody. You just lost your job. Now who's going to pay your rent and your mortgage? Who's going to pay your car note? 
you made a point and he, he or she, they're still, there, they're still there on the job and, and you are jobless. That's not a smart move. And that's not a new, it's a direction, but it's not a new direction. Maybe it is, I don't know. No, it's not a good one. Then be willing to allow the joy of God to permeate in your life. You know, there is something to be said about having the joy of God permeated in one's life. You know, and I'm not talking about being happy. I'm talking about having the joy of God in your life. That is sustaining. So today, you know, God says he wants to do a new thing in your life. He wants to do a new thing in, in our church. And so we are open to the possibilities of what God wants to do. Take us higher. You know, grow us deeper, grow us stronger. It, 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 I'm not sure how you felt about it, but seeing the jewels up here today, oh my gosh. It, it, it's, it's, another, it's another testimony of how we have trusted God and we, and we are living, we are living in the blessings of God. When we see our young children, Thank you, parents, for bringing them back, for allowing them to be a blessing, not only to those of us who are here, but those who are in our cyber worship as well, around the whole nation and the globe, those who are with us in our cyber worship space. They're seeing that our young children are back in church. They're seeing that our jewels, our teens, are back in church. And that is a real blessing. God is doing a great thing. We're, we're, putting, we're, we're putting the adverse effects of COVID-19 behind us. We're putting all that stuff. We still seem to be healthy and safe, but we're putting it behind us and we're trusting God to do what God wants to do in the life of this ministry. And we're trusting him for greater things. And we're not trying to live on the blessings of the past because we know that God has blessings before us that he wants us to experience. And we have to be able to claim that, hold on to that, and trust him to reveal to us what he wants us to experience, what he wants us to experience in him. So there's a personal challenge that I ask you to consider. Will you consider opening up your life more to what God wants to do? Will you open up your life and let him do what he wants to do in your life to bless your life? The only hindrance that we have to experiencing more of God ourselves. We can hold ourselves back from experiencing all that God wants us to experience. I just want to live in him with more peace. You know, it's a terrible thing when you toss and turn all night long because the stuff that's going on in your head. You know, and, it, and if that is happening to someone, if you're tossing and turning all night because you, you can't, you, your mind is not at rest and you are not at rest, then consider giving all that stuff over. Give it over to God so that you can rest. Clarice wears one of these, uh, what you call that thing you wear on your arm, a Fitbit? Is that what it's called? So she wears this, this Fitbit on her arm at night when she's resting. And it tells her how much quality sleep she gets. And then she, sometimes she tells me the next day she looks at it. She said, you know, I only got like three and a half hours of quality sleep. It's okay. I'm not sure how I'm supposed to respond to that. <laughs> yeah. So, that, so, so does that mean... Does that mean that during the time that she is attempted to sleep, that her mind is racing and doing other things? And perhaps she's not the only one. You know, 
You know, sometimes when I think I'm in a deep sleep, and then all of a sudden I'm awake and I look at, I look at, the, I look at my phone, it's like, man, you've only been asleep for two and a half hours. You know? And things happen in your mind sometimes when you, you lay down and you try to, and I'm saying to God, just let me sleep, please. You know, let me have four or five good hours. Let me, if I get five good hours, I'm great. You know? And then my doctor would probably tell me I need more than that. Clarice tells me all the time I need more than that. But man, when it's Hallmark time, it's hard to turn that TV off. <laughs> All right, I'm done. Right. But let me say this. Let me say this to you. What I'm really trying to do these first few sermons, I'm really trying to lay a foundation for us uh, to, to, to focus on really becoming more of what God wants us to become. And, 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 and really being the healthy people in Christ. You know, that's, the, that's what I'm trying to bring us to, to see that we can be healthy people, healthy believers in him who really embrace what the scripture is asking us to embrace. You know, and, and to understand that we, we, we're going to have some challenges you know, we're going to have some issues that we have to deal with. It's not so much the issue that we confront, but it's how we deal with the issue that we're confronted with. You know, we don't have to lose our minds over things that happen. Um, and, and one of the things that happens that we deal with that, that really can be very crushing is when we have to deal with illness in our life or when we deal with illness in the life of a loved one. And we have to say, God, please just, just give, us, give us peace about how we are to move forward. And he'll do that. He will do that. And then, and then for those of us who are parents and some of our children might not be where we want them to be, Listen, as a parent with adult children, this is what we do. We just simply pray for them. You, you can't you, you, you free them up, give them over to God, but keep praying. My mom is 85 years old, and guess what she does every day? She prays for her kids. You know, she prays for her children. And when I talk to her, she said, Beep, son. Just please be careful. Be careful out there. Maybe she knows something that I don't know. But this I do know. I have learned from her as she continues to pray for her children. Then Clarice and I, we pray for our daughter. I cannot live her life for her. She has to live it for herself. But there is one thing that is apparent that I can do and we can do, and that's pray God's protection on her life. And no matter, no matter how old, we can pray that God protect our sons and daughters wherever they may be, wherever they may be. And they're not going to be perfect. And I don't know why. I'm going down this road here. But maybe there's a parent and maybe there's a son or daughter out there that needs to understand that you may have some differences with your mom and dad, but they are still your parents. And none of us, none of us are perfect. We all need God's grace. We all need God's mercy. And there comes a point in time when there, need, there needs to be some things that we just put behind us. And understand, we're here only for a period of time. And then when we're gone, we're not coming back this way. So whatever we need to do, 
Let's do it now and let God do a new thing. The new thing that he wants to do in each of us. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Please stand for the invitation. I want to extend the for those in our cyber worship space, I want to extend the invitation to Christian discipleship and church membership. If it's your desire to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, please pray this prayer with me. Dear God, I know that I was born into this world a sinner. I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins. I ask for forgiveness of my sins, and I invite Christ to come into my heart to be Lord of my life. Amen. If you pray that prayer, you have received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. For those in our virtual space of worship, if you desire church membership with First Mount Zion, please give us a call at area code 703-670-0184 and someone will respond to your telephone call. For those of you in the sanctuary, I extend the invitation to Christian discipleship and church membership. If there is one who desired to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, or one who desires church membership as the choir sings, I invite you to come. Thank you all so very much for your worship of the Lord today and do it throughout the course of this week. Just simply continue to open up yourselves and let God do a great work in your life this week. Whether it's bringing more peace, whether it's bringing more joy, just be open to that. Be open to experiencing him perhaps in a new and greater way. May the peace of the Lord be with you, my brothers and sisters. Now, Lord, we thank you for reinforcing this morning to us, God, that you desire good things for us and that we need to get out of our way, our own way, Father. Let go of the things of the past, Father, so that you can fill us with the things that you have for us today and for the future. For that, we're grateful and thankful. And now may the grace of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide within each and every one of us right now, henceforth, and forevermore.